Rhythm is perhaps the most important component of music. And as classical guitarists, we have to be a little extra diligent about practicing our rhythm because we're so often practicing and performing alone. Being alone means we're not held accountable for any wavering in our rhythm or pulse. If we play in an ensemble, then we have constant check-ins with our timing and our rhythm because we're playing alongside other people. And if we're out of time, it's immediately obvious. However, as soloists, we can easily get off track and there's no one really there to tell us if we're in time or out. So we have to take a few extra steps, make that little bit more effort in our practice to make sure we are playing in time and with good rhythm. In this video, I wanna look at three specific ways to improve your rhythm, and they're pretty easy too. All of these rhythmic improvements have to do with transitions. And in music, we have transitions between measures, between bars, between sections of music, and also, particularly to classical guitar, we have transitions between tonal areas. So let's start with the bar line. The bar line divides our musical notes into small groupings so that we can keep them in time signatures and rhythms. However, we often stumble across these bar lines and have inadvertent pauses, perhaps because we've practiced them as individual bars, or perhaps there's some kind of you know, mental association with that bar line being some kind of pause, but it really is important to practice across the bar line. So let me give you an example of what I mean. This is the minuet by Petzl. So here we have four measures of three, four time. When I say practice across the bar line, I mean going from beat three to beat one. Often what can happen is that we get stuck by pausing a little bit between beat three and one like this. Or maybe even more obvious in this example would be uh, between beat three and one in measure two and three. So it would sound like this. having a little bit of a break in between those two musical ideas. The ideas themselves are nice and coherent, but unless we practice across those bar lines, we lose that sense of pulse. Let me find another example in here. That is, sounds to me actually much more credible as a place that I've heard this happen before. This is across the bar line but there's also a technical shift that happens at the same time. Right? So not only are we having a visual divide there and a grouping that we may have practiced just within one bar as a drill exercise perhaps, but we also have a shift that's quite difficult at this point. So even more the reason to practice across the bar line. And we could do that, let me just show you a couple of different ways to do that. First of all, we could simply play from beats one to one and making sure that stays in time. So one, two, and three, and one. Making sure we land on that downbeat in time. The other way would be to start at the second or third beat, which is far less common for us, and simply practice going across the bar line. So that would sound like this. Rarely do we have to practice more than just that individual join because uh, that is where the hesitation is. We don't have to keep going on to beats two and three. This, that actually doesn't get us any, uh, doesn't develop this problem any further. It doesn't help solve the problem. Rather, we just are adding more notes into the practice. So really it is about the join. So that when we bring it back into context, we don't have that hesitation there anymore. So that's the first issue I'd like to bring up. And again, it's a pretty solvable issue, but it does take some diligent practice on that particular transition from beats three to one, or in, if it's in four, four, from beats four to one across the bar line. The second point that I'd like to address is a very similar one, but it's on a bigger scale. This is to do with form or large phrases that have pauses. So staying within the same example of this minuet, let's say we came to the end of the first section. That sounds like this. And we start 
start again, we go back to the beginning. But did you notice that I went out of time then? I went one, two, three, stopped. And almost like I'm starting the piece anew. We are in the pulse of this piece and we don't want to break that pulse at this point. So even though we feel like we're resetting and starting, you actually have to practice again this transition. So we've gone uh, one, two, and three, and one, two, three. It's no more difficult than that, but just the practicing of it is quite important because I see it quite often in grade exams that there are these hesitations or pauses at the end of sections where there are repeats or uh, perhaps where there are ends of phrases. Let me find you an example at the end of a phrase. Okay, this is study number two by Fernando Saw, Opus 60. This is the second piece in our grade book and I'll play the last, looks like six measures of phrase here. It's a very clear ending to a phrase there. But there's only a rest on the third beat. It then continues on uh, in time. And that is another point where I found that people pause too long and that disrupts the rhythm, it disrupts the pulse. So simply put, it is practicing across that transition. One, two, three. Mechanically, there's not anything more difficult going on. It's just the fact that we're not used to playing in time at that point in time. So it's worth practicing. The third issue I wanna deal with, the third transition, is the tonal transition when we move our right hand to get contrast in our sound. I'll give you an example that comes from the 20 practice routines. This is from practice routine number three. It's a little study I wrote called Salute to the Morning Sun. And this is about well, the short story is that when I used to surf back in Australia, the sun rose over the east horizon, over the ocean, and a very powerful blast of sunlight would come in and it would slowly fade as the sun went up and became less potent. So this opens up with a very uh, grand gesture, strong and loud fortissimo, and gradually over the course of the three lines, we gradually get down to so it's all about transitions in, in the right hand and also contrast of tone and dynamic. Now, in terms of playing that, we have a lot of movement in the right hand. And while a lot of students at the academy do a good job with committing to really nice tasto or ponticello or normale, just normal in the middle there, it's the transition of the right hand that doesn't stay in time. So if we took, for example, Ponticello. Now there's a big right hand transition all the way up here. I know it's not a giant distance compared to many other things, but it's a giant distance on the guitar. Right? So that, that transition from Ponticello to Tasto needs to be practiced. So we've gone. Right, that break. There's not much time actually between that last quarter note to playing the next downbeat on Tasto up here. So that is definitely worth practicing. If you haven't practiced that transition, you might get caught out very easily because there's other things to be concentrating. Left hand, playing the notes in the right hand, and on top of that, placement of the right hand position for Tasto. So that in itself, even if you're playing the music in isolation in time, it's worth practicing the transition. Just that. Those three aspects, so transi transitioning across the bar line, transitioning on repeats in time and maintaining the pulse, and transitioning your right hand through different tone worlds, different sound worlds, those are very much worth practicing in isolation so that we can shore up our rhythm. Because these are rhythmic hesitations, pauses that happen in playing a lot and it's a little hard for us to monitor it uh, unless we hear a recording of ourselves 
or we have someone point it out. So always remember to practice the transitions, set a little time aside when learning a piece to practice right hand shifts, uh, big repeated sections, and also to practice across the bar lines if we have longer phrases. So I hope that is of use and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.